Hey folks, welcome back to another epic HP gaming game link video. I say epic because I'm super excited because I have something that I'm going to be unboxing for you today, which I, is the epitome of the word epic. It is a deluxe edition. It has just arrived. I've been talking about it for a little while. It's finally here. It's time to get into Dimension Games. Twisted Fables. Hello folks, loyal viewers and new fans alike, welcome back. As I said at the outset, this is HP Gaming's Game Link. I am Matt, and you should know me by now if you don't already though. It's nice to finally make your acquaintance. Today, we are here, as I said at the outset, to unbox the Kickstarter edition, the deluxe edition of Dimension Games Twisted Fables, which is an epic deck builder, fantasy realm, crazy box of fun. And there is a whole host of goodies in here as well, including the 2v2 mode, which I'm very excited to take a look at as well. Uh, if you've been following along with our Gotcha Backer series, you'll know that we literally have just talked about this in our most recent July 2021 update. And literally no sooner had it arrived or had that video been uploaded to the interwebs, this arrived on our doorstep. So very excited to get into this one. Um, not just because it is it is a massive box, um, not just because it's a massive box, not just because it's a deck builder, but because of the um, different play styles that the 10 something different characters that you can play as uh, have involved. And you'll notice as well that I'm doing this without my trusty pocket knife, which I didn't expect I'd be able to do. Um, but there is gonna be so much content in this box. Um, I'm just chomping at the bit to get involved. But first things first, plastic of course goes onto the floor. Uh, now, just a quick one to show you the artwork. Um, this is very much a fantasy theme deck builder. Fantasy as in fantasy fairy tales. So we've got all sorts of femme fatales from across fairy stories. Uh, I believe you can see uh, Red Riding Hood uh, front and center there. Uh, Alice as in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, Snow White is back center as well. There is a host of others. I think uh, Little Mermaid is in here as well. The box, as you can see, is huge. There is a ton of content in this one. Um, I'm, I like the idea of having building up your shields. There's different player boards in here as well. Look, let's stop talking about it. Let's get into the box. Come on over. We'll take a look and get top down and get into this sucker. And there she is. The box doesn't actually fit in to the frame because there is just, it's just epic. As I said at the out that it's huge. The artwork on this is fantastic. Um, loving the, the style of this. They've taken the, the fairy tales of uh, ancient times, brought them into the modern age. I mean, you know, for starters, Red Riding Hood here is a cyborg, uh, carries a firearm. Um, I mean, that's just a little bit of a taste of what we're going to find inside this box. Uh, and it is a huge box, as you can see. Oh my goodness, that is right. I forget what's included in this. There is just so much content uh, in this um, uh, deluxe edition of the game. This is an art book uh, to showcase what is some epic, epic artwork. It is it's incredibly thick as well. I don't know if you can sort of see there. I mean, look at this. That is uh, a little bit of Alice in Wonderland. A uh, vibe there, Cheshire Cat style. I mean, you've got all the different characters here. So uh, Red Riding Hood, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Alice, Mulan, Cesarade, uh, Dorothy is in Dorothy Gale of Oz, Match Girl, uh, Little Mermaid, Cayuga. I just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. System hack cards, epic power. She's got a bit of Thor going on there as well. Oh my goodness. Just amazing. And a very well produced book as well. I think it's um, not, uh, not the, I, I didn't know what to expect with the art book, but oh my goodness. Now we're talking uh, Sleeping Beauty, Sleeper Awakens. She's asleep when she wakes up, look out. There is just, oh my goodness. 
Oh, that's going to be some serious reading. Uh, then you've got the rule book. Uh, now, this one is a standard, standard deck builder, but takes it up to... Uh, turns that uh, deck builder up to 11. Uh, this is the, the story behind the game and what's uh, what's going on in the worlds surrounding our heroines, uh, the different components that make up the game, um, defense trackers, HP trackers, epic threshold power, uh, all that sort of stuff and all the different minis, who's who, uh, how to prepare the fables, how to play the game, different phases, play area, the 2v2 mode's gonna be in here as well, how to end the phase of the end of the term, how to play a 2v2 game, setting up relic mode. Oh my goodness, I just don't even know where to begin. Different character advantages and disadvantages, which I like as well, that's brilliant. Um, so, so much going on, oh my goodness. Uh, I love us. This is this is uh, fantastic. I've been hanging out for this for a while, as you would know if you've been watching uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, okay, we've got tokens and cards and other bits and pieces as well. Uh, then we'll get into the bits and pieces inside. Now, I think this is uh, some deluxe components for the add-on pack. Uh, the original game on Kickstarter was uh, only uh, five or so, or five or six different characters. Uh, and then you could have purchased add-on packs to um, choose which fables you wanted to add in. So each character, each pack had an extra three or four different characters, a la like a villainous expansion. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously we've decided to go all in because we want to tackle it all. So this is uh, a little mermaid uh, standee because in the standard version of the game, you have a standee that moves along the player board. Whereas in the deluxe edition, they are minis and uh, we will take you through those in a moment. Uh, there's the match girl there as well. Again, the art is just incredible. I'm going to get rid of this plastic. Sorry, the plastic should have gone on the floor. And we've got some tokens. Now, the tokens are a high-quality uh, chipboard. Uh, these look like some sort of Little Mermaid-esque uh, octopus markers, <laughs> which is cool. Uh, then you've got uh, Dorothy here, uh, Shezerati and her 1001 uh, Tales. Uh, looks like some extra markers. Now these are double-sided. They've got little uh, sort of no negative effects and positive effects there. They obviously mean different things depending on um, what you're, or which character you're playing as. And then you've got these other tokens here which represent like little diamonds. Maybe there could be system hacks. Maybe there could be something for Dorothy. They're on a punch board with Dorothy uh, or with uh, Shezerat as well. So who knows? And then you've got here Alice, uh, and then you've got uh, all the other characters. Now, I believe there's double sides to uh, to Sleeping Beauty. I could be wrong. Yep, there is. There she is. Sleeping side, awake, devastating, crazy side. I love that. That's so good. Again, more tokens here, which look like they're just extra counters for power and things as well. Some sort of power symbol. Oh, Mulan's fallen out. That's okay. I like those. They're very cool. It's very much... Um, cyber art um, style, which I think is, I don't know, I, I kind of dig it. I kind of dig this crazy sort of epic vengeance style. Um, Snow White looks the most traditional, I guess, uh, but I bet you she doesn't play that way. I mean, for starters, she's actually holding on to the apple, ready to cause some pain, and I love that. I've got these nice little uh, tabs here, uh, which is great. We'll remove the plastic tray to keep everything intact for storage and shifting, which is great. I think this is, might have been taped on as well, so we'll get rid of that little tape mark because we want to get into this. One of the things I liked, one of the one of the aspects of this that I really liked, um, that probably got piqued my interest before we even backed it, uh, was the player boards, which I'm going to show you now. And there's a whole lot of cards and tokens and other bits and pieces in there, which we'll get into a little bit later on. In fact, let's just move that out of the way for now. We've got here the token trays and other bits and pieces, but here we have the player boards and the individual player cards. So we're gonna get my trusty knife out. Oh, they're in a little Ziploc baggie. I might keep that for tokens and bits, even though there's some other ones in there too. Put that to the side. So we've got here four player trays 
and these will actually have, these are slots for your pegs. So uh, this one here denotes health um, or power or, or damage as the case may be. Uh, you've got your shields here as well. And down the bottom, you've got your power track or your epic power track. And they're all individually numbered inside there as well, all the way up to 25. And then you've got this insert and it's been actually cut in um, or molded, which I think is absolutely brilliant. The best part is when you choose your uh, character, your fable to play as, it actually slots inside that board. So you've got a complete reference for where you're at. And I think, I don't know, there's something about, again, table presence, having that on the table in front of you. You can see at a glance where your opponent is at as well, which I really love. It means you know how far you are or how close you are or how far you are from victory. Um, there's something about those player boards that just gives it a bit of an extra oomph as well, which is really nice. I really like that. Uh, I'm just going to open up these crazy, crazy uh, player cards. We've got here all the different fables. They've got some great artwork on the back as well. Uh, and again, oh, nice finish. Nice finish on these. It's a card, but it's not just a card. It's got like a, a, a matte gloss or something finish on it as well. So you've got your Twisted Fables background, which is epic and sick and wonderful and gorgeous. And I love it. Uh, and then you've got the special rules for 2v2 mode, skill supply decks of how to build those out. Starts at 30 life, has 6 defense and 15. I think that might be power or action points or something, who knows. And they've all got a different border. So here we've got the cybernetics of Red Riding Hood. Then we've got a bit of a forest thing for Snow White going on, which I love. And they have different, uh, different stats, which means you'll have to pick and choose carefully how you play. Snow White's got chains and things because she's locked up, strapped to the bed. And they've got their deck symbols as well because they all have their own individual starting deck, of course, as it is a deck builder. Alice is all steampunk, which I love. I love that. That's so good. Some purple cybernetic stuff going on here. Cheshire Cat looks pretty sick. Mulan deals with energy. She's got like some sort of energy blade, energy weapon, a la Halo, which I really love too. Kaguya which is very much that Eastern, if I can use that, Eastern Shinto Gate's cool. That's awesome. Little Mermaid's got all sorts of fish themes with octopus and stuff. Digging that. Match Girl is all about fire magic and almost some sort of devil worship, I guess. Uh, there's a big, like, sort of um, Ghost Rider-esque vibe going on down here, which is great. And she's riding a demonic skull. I mean, why wouldn't you be? Dorothy Gale, who's all about Oz and uh, all sort of Mechana, I guess. She's a robot as well, cyborg. Uh, don't mess with her. Uh, Shezerate, again, uh, dealing with the Thousand Odd Tales mind control. Uh, looks a little bit Riddler in her color theme, which I'm digging as well. And then back to Red Riding Hood as well. Love that. Dig that. It's brilliant. We are going to come back to the minis. Uh, we'll get into those in a little while. Uh, I'm going to keep one of those out because I think I'm going to bring one of those back in a little bit. We'll put that to the side and we'll get into some cards and tokens and other magical, wonderful things. The inserts obviously have enough space for all the different cards and bits and pieces as well. There is a ton of stuff in this box, as you can see. You've got hero cards and dividers, so dividers to sort through uh, all the different character starting decks. Very helpful. Uh, the art on these, I think, is very similar to what we saw on the player cards, which I, you know, obviously having everything uniform, I kind of like. I would have liked a bit of alternate art as well, I guess. Uh, I'm not opposed to having everything uniform because it does keep everything in line, you know, and you know who, um, which card or which deck is for which person. But, you know, having some alternate art would have been nice too. Uh, again, these are all very much as we saw before. Uh, I am shooting in high def, so you can always pause if you want to check out one card more than the other. Now, that's different artwork. That's different. Don't mind that. Little Mermaid's the same. Match Girl. Now, the one thing I'm regretting now, um, which we didn't do um, when we back to Kickstarter, we had the opportunity to purchase some individual customized uh, playmats featuring some of the gals, some of the characters here, uh, and I didn't go in for them just because I just... I, I, they were a bit expensive. I couldn't justify the expense when I can use obviously my own uh, branded playmats. But at the same time, the artwork was just epic. Um, shoulda, woulda, coulda, but didn't, but that's okay. Uh, you got your standee holders here, which are quite durable actually. Um, they're actually branded by uh, with uh, Dimension as well, which is cool. I don't know if you can see that there. 
Um, I do like the fact they've got their own branded little standees. So if you use the standees, and obviously you're welcome to do so, you pop in uh, your standee, and then obviously you can move them around the mat. And depending on where you are on the uh, actual board, uh, will dictate how much damage or ranged damage, if if that is what you're after, uh, you can do to your opponent. Uh, what have we got here? We've got all sorts of other bells and whistles in here. We'll have a look at these. There's some, oh, this is epic. So we've got all the tokens that we punched out here on the punch board, but because we've gone deluxe, we have some deluxe um, acrylic tokens. Look at that. <laughs> these are so good. The noise. Oh yes, so good. So you've got the little cybernetic, uh, cybernetic sort of style double-sided ones that we saw earlier. Uh, these little power uh, wind tokens, and I think they are, um, you know, uh, fable specific. They're the ones obviously for uh, Little Mermaid, uh, and they're sort of they're screen printed, which I'm, I'm not a fan of. But at the same time, the tone, uh, the style, and the color and the slight, almost opaque but not quite translucency of these. So, so good. I love that. And I don't think, I think I'm just going to throw the chipboard away. I won't. I never throw anything away. Um, ask my wife. But the um, those acrylic tokens are going to be where it's at. And obviously it means if we run out of acrylic tokens, we've always got more so we can build in more into the pool for our resources. Let's see, we've got here. Now, this is the little pegs that are on the player board. So I'm glad I kept one of the player boards out for you to show you what this is all about. So these represent the different aspects that you'll be using on your board. So you've got here a red for health, uh, what looks like orange for shield, which match the cards as well. So you know what you've got. That's um, uh, power, I believe. And then you've got epic, uh, what looks like epic threshold power as well. And I think that's, again, um, certain character uh, specific. I could be wrong, obviously, I haven't played it yet, so I'll be able to find out, but the pegs fit nice and snug, and they're not gonna jump out anytime soon. If you hit it, it's gonna, it's gonna stay right in there, which is great, I love that, nice and stable. We'll put our shields at full, uh, and then we've got our heart uh, token. So maybe the purple one is for the threshold, uh, for, the, for the pain threshold, I'm not too, not, again, not too sure. You've got your power marker there as well. So you can see the pegs sitting quite nicely. They're not going to fall out. They're nice and snug. And as I said, at a glance, when you're playing against somebody or playing a 2v2, you can see at a glance where everyone's at, which is bloody brilliant. I love that. And they pop out. They, they're nice and snug, but they pop out just as easy. There's no sticking. Um, very, very, very good indeed. Again, quality components. And I believe uh, those are the same style of components that were in the standard version as well which is brilliant okay uh let's have a look at what we've we got here we've got a play mat this is going to be the play mat for the main arena of combat uh, and i think where are we got some plastic at the end more plastic on the floor but that's okay Oh, I smell that neoprene smell. Oh, 2v2 symbols there. This is the uh, battleground, so to speak. My gosh, it's actually a lot longer than I expected. It's quite long. So you've got different places uh, where you will start. If you're in 2v2, you'll start here. Uh, draw decks for different aspects um, or slots, I should say. Uh, these would represent some sort of power markers. We can actually put in little power markers and lay traps for your opponents as you move back and forth. You might start at opposite ends, work your way in. If you've got a character here and they're facing this way, if you're behind them, you can do more damage and things. Position is important in this game from what I understand. Um, but as a presence on the table, that's gonna be fantastic with the actual trays as well. And there's a little nice little slot for the, uh, for the mat, the play mat, which is very, very cool. Uh, I do, <laughs> I think, I know I'm gonna to wanna to teach this to Charlotte so she can play it with me, but she might be too young. I don't really wanna mess up and <laughs> love of fairy tales. Um, but I can see uh, I'm going to be reading up, reading up on the rules and getting into it quick sticks. Uh, let's see, what have we got here? We've got, uh, so it looks like some extra cards in here. Let's see what we've got. Ooh, hang on a minute. I think, oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, so I think there was an issue uh, with the way they printed in the, in the packs as well. Because uh, part of the uh, Kickstarter Deluxe Edition came with the 30 uh, extra foil art cards, but inside here, some of the abilities and things didn't print. Um, some of the... Oh, 
some of the cards, uh, while printed in foil, were printed incorrectly. There were some errors on those. So we actually have an extra pack of these, um, which obviously, for the, for the most part, I can't actually see any issues. I think it may have been... Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure what the issue was. I can't remember exactly. My goodness, the art on these cards is just amazing. Um, they've got, uh, I think there were some issues that were, the, the symbols were printed differently. I'll have to go through them in greater detail and more time to actually sort of pinpoint what was the issue. But along with these cards, they actually sent out uh, a replacement pack as well, which I think is the same cards, just with extra, um, with the, the errors fixed. So I'll go through those and, and work through some comparisons. Uh, you may or may not have already seen some come up on screen, or at least a, a more of a definition as to what that was. Uh, let's just compare them and see yeah, the first card here and see if there was any issues. Uh, it looks like they, those ones are the same. Uh, who knows? I'll have to go through um, and make sure that I'm using the right set. So I'll pop that one back there. Uh, and that one can be the new set there. And these, I think, will be a attack decks. Because as you play cards and collect attack points, there will be a market that you can buy from. But you also have your own individual market deck for your fable, which means you're the only person that can buy from it, uh, which I think is very cool. So you've got attack points uh, here that you can use to do damage. Attack one, attack of two, and then attack of three. We want those, they're very cool. Uh, then you've got defense, uh, defense again. And I think it's one of these games um, similar to Cafe Chaos, which we unboxed recently, where if you play a defense three card on your opponent's next turn, they need to do at least three damage plus more to actually get uh, to, to reach you, I guess. Then you've got your movement cards, movement two, Movement three, and again, you can expend these to um, uh, upgrade your deck. And then you've got some wilds as well. Wild magic, but not quite wild magic. Kind of digging that. Kind of digging that. Looking very, very cool. Uh, we've got here some, what looks like starter deck cards. So we've got some starter deck cards here. Potentially Siren's Call, Siren's Song. And this is uh, Little Mermaid. Uh, transforming into some sort of crazy prawn. Uh, the cards are sticking a little bit together, but that's okay. The Raging Tempest, Shire and Shriek, Attack of Three, oh my goodness, Rising Tide, Gain a New Tentacle, Surging Wrath, Erupting Wrath. So there's different attacks based on um, the different powers that you can choose, Avenging Wrath. The art on the card is great. Rising Tide, the Encroaching Sea, the Invading Sea, Daughter of Oceans, Conquering Sea, Con the Rising Tide, Restoring the Waters. Max HP limit is reduced to 18. At the end of each of your turns, recover 2 HP. Whoa! Causing some serious, serious trouble. Here we've got the Match Girl, Make a Wish, Regret a Wish, Ritual of Pain. Whoa, that's a twist. Because it is called Twisted Fables, funnily enough. Requite a wish, playing with fire, a diabolical offer, gamble, inflamed craving, diabolical deal. So they've reused some of the art on the cards, which, again, I'm okay with to a point, but I would have liked as the power of the card gets more intense that maybe, maybe we see a bit more intensity. I mean, there's a head here, for, for goodness sake. Um... After all I've given, my goodness, little match girl, crazy mission, crazy craziness, demons due, infernal overload. See, now we're getting somewhere. Um, yeah, the cards do, they are sticking together a little bit, but that's okay. Match can be used as a wild card. Cause some serious trouble. Uh, more match cards, more match cards. I love that. Fantastic. All right, let's have a look and see what we've got here. We've got some more cards here. All right, some more starting cards here. We've got uh, Dorothy starting deck, target acquired, target locked, kill order affirmed, neutralized, nowhere to hide, probing engaged, my goodness, probing deeper. <laughs> wow, more than machine. It's a bit um, ex machina. Uh, probing complete. 
I can have the nowhere to hide, enemy sighted, enemy in range, got some serious finger gun action there, apex force approved, enemy dispatched. I cannot wait to get into this, the lion. She's gonna cause some serious trouble. The Scarecrow, so these are different traits. The Tin Man, Deleted Dreams. Oh my goodness, Deleted Memories. Okay, now we go to Shezera, the Hands of Fate. Deleted Existence, hmm, maybe that was mixed up. Who knows? Caught in the Web, Engulfed in the Net. Saturated, Rewriting Desires, Dissolved in the Net. Caught in the Web, The Watcher. The Manipulator, Formatting Thoughts, The Violator, gosh. Caught in the web again, Draining Addiction, Severed Pathway, and Cut from the System, wow. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. I can't decide who I want to play as first. Um, I think there's going to be some serious research into all the different characters. Hey, if you've got a favourite, by all means, pop them in the comments below. Let us know who you'd like to play as first. Uh, or who you'd like to see a playthrough with, uh, which character you'd like to see me play, uh, and we'll try and get one of those shot for you. It has been a little bit tricky at the moment, uh, coming in and out of lockdowns. Melbourne's just had its fifth uh, lockdown. I know uh, some uh, countries around the world are still on their first, but we'll try and get some bits and pieces done for you. Now, this is Sleeping Beauty, Shattering Bones, Shattering Chains, Blood Ritual, Blood Rite, Shattering Souls. My goodness. Uh, treating what ails, the groping dark, the grasping dark, and as you get more powerful, mental barriers and the wrenching dark. My goodness. And they woke up. Goodness. Blood renews, the sleeper wakes. And then we get into dealing the cards with Alice, cutting the cards, cutting the deck, off with her head, rig the cards, showtime. Magic tricks, mind tricks. Wow. Wonderland, welcome, hat trick. More showtime, curiously covert. We're all mad here, aren't we all? Curiously curious. Oh, I can't wait to get into this. We've got here a fabulous day, fabulous day, uh, important date. The game's afoot. And here we go Milan, the underestimated, undeniable. Channeled and then undiminished. Gathering storm. Averted fire. Uh, diverted might, sorry. Diverted fire. Diverted might. Evading fate. Diverted wrath. No retreat. No surrender. Gathering storm again. No quarter. Uh, then we've got enlightened assault. No mercy. That sounds about right. Take no prisoners. More gathering storm. Honor's thunder. Confronting Chaos, The Legend's Call, and she summons a giant blue Patronus dragon. I love that, that's fantastic. Uh, Kaguya, uh, Ascendant Light, Ascendant Glory, Swift Reprisal, Ascendant Avatar, Elective Repose, Adult Echoes, Bygone Echoes, A Blood Moon, wow. Divine Echoes, Reflective Repose, Focused Intent, Focused Resolve, Uncanny Instinct, Focus Ascent, Reflective Repose again, we've got Judgment Arising, Impulsive Onslaught, and Blazing Shinai. Now we'll say the card stock is okay. Um, obviously the foil cards are going to get a bit more play because they're foil cards, but um, I don't know, so it's got a bit of a feel to it, maybe because they're fresh out of the... Uh, out of the packs, I'm not sure. Some parts of them I just find are not, um, I don't know, maybe it's not a, not a stronger card stock as I'm used to. Uh, what have we got here? We've got extra uh, cards for movement, uh, which we saw earlier, that's a 0.3 movement. Uh, wild, we saw again earlier. Uh, then we've got uh, wild for three. A pot shot, okay, so here we go. We're gonna put these, uh, I'm gonna put those in there. These are for Red Riding Hood Pot Shot, Crack Shot, Overdrive Burn, Sniper Shot. My goodness, I can't decide who I would like to play as. First, Onboard Cash, Bit of Energy Shield Action, Electrified Shield, Hooded System, the Omega Shield. That's going to be some business. 
Uh, then you've got the onboard cash again. Unleashed ballistics, range one, damage one, knock back the opponent up to however many spaces of your choice. Unleash firepower, transform senses. My goodness. Unleashed fury. More damage, onboard cash again there. System hack, which is a card we saw that's epic and uh, can come in foil. The wolf consumes, raining down vengeance. And now I think we're getting into Snow White with the Mirror Shard Storm, Shard Tempest, a Crystal Coffin, a Shard Vortex, Poisoned Purity, Tainted Offering, uh, Tainted Feast, Corrupted Destiny, Tainted Maelstrom, Poisoned Fury again, Tainted Maelstrom, Shattered Passage, Shattered Truth, uh, Venomous Turn, Twist, Shattered Destiny. I love that. There's that poison purity again. The rain of mirrors, brewing destruction, and seven serpents. What on earth is going on there? Goodness gracious, poison, obviously. Uh, and that's part of those poison counters. I think we saw lots of poison, lots of poison in the deck here. Poison for two, poison for three. Ouch. When this card enters your discard pile, you lose two HP. Discard this card from your hand to gain one power. Inner turmoil, inner rage. Now we're into Sleeping Beauty stuff. Bit of bloodletting. My goodness, inner fury. And treating what ails again. So it's more um, uh, Sleeping Beauty cards in that as well. All right, our last deck of cards. We've got more attack cards. This is obviously the first page or first stage of attack. One point. Uh, and we've got two attack, because obviously if you're playing a 2v2, you'll need lots of cards. Uh, three attack, which we saw before. These are all the same. Defense, uh, two defense, uh, three defense, which we saw. And then we've got movement again. More of the same. More movement for two points. Movement for three points, which we saw before. I'm going to get those and pop them down there with the wilds. We'll separate those out. And last but not least... We've got the small deck of cards for the little places on the uh, board. You can see here, there's little marks there and, and card spaces here. You can lay traps and things. So the backs of these cards in this little deck, we've got the different symbols for the factions. This is Alice, um, Mad Cap, and then you've got little other symbols here, which I think are just generic. There's another deck of uh, a space for them on the uh, player board for those. So the Alice cards, let's have a quick look at those. Uh, they look very, very cool, and they are Queen of Hearts, who means business, the Mad Hatter, and the Cheshire Cat, and they must give you um, some specific bonuses based on where you're at. So I'm going to pop those in there. And then we've got uh, these little symbols. So we've got the Magic Lamp from Shazarar's deck, his command, Gain Power, and then different, uh, there's that one there, Thirst No More, Recover HP. Uh, treasures unlocked, draw cards and then discard cards from your hand. Uh, then you've got spying the future, reveal, to uh, reveal the top uh, cards from your deck, add every basic card to your hand and discard the rest. And they're individually numbered as well, fairest of them all. So these could be um, effects that could uh, affect everybody, but you shuffle in only the ones that are relating to the characters you're playing as, Tales Retold. Snicker snack. That's Alice. Uh, Alice in Wonderland. Um, definitely, definitely a reference to the Jabberwocky there. Uh, sold the cow. That's a Jack and the Beanstalk reference. Uh, Alakazam, magic stuff. That one's cool. I like that. That's cool. Uh, navigating dreams. I love the art on these. They're so good. They're so, so good. And that is it. That is uh, all the different components. There's going to be a lot of sorting to work out. Uh, I, I do like the fact there is the space to sort individually all the different decks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite enough space. It would have been nice if that was all one thing, so you have all the starting cards there. But I think it's different deck builds based on um, what you require. So I think that's going to take some sorting. This is going to look like it's a component tray here. Um, two sets of component trays, as it turns out, which is very cool. I tell you what, that's everything for the box. We're going to come back out. We'll give you some final thoughts, uh, and then we'll take you through, uh, hopefully, a playthrough down the track once you let us know who you want to see us play as. How very, very dare I. I am so sorry, folks. My absolute apologies. I nearly, nearly made the mistake of going through all this without going through the most important part, 
which is of course the miniatures. So what we're gonna do here, we'll take them out and show you through all the different miniatures. If I make a mistake as to who's who, my absolute apologies, we'll go from there. We'll start from the top and work our way down. Uh, here we have uh, the Little Mermaid. So she is looking <laughs> uh, absolutely incredible. You can see the detail they've gone into here. Um, obviously she's riding, you know, a Kraken uh, tentacle, which is just brilliant. I think it's the same pose she is on the card um, there. She's got a little hands out. She's going to cause some serious, serious trouble. The detail is brilliant. The builds are fantastic. And they've even got the weathered uh, stretching of the tentacle as well, uh, which is just brilliant. That's the Little Mermaid. Who have we got here? This one looks like uh, Dorothy. So yeah, she means business. Uh, she's got all the sass. She's got her cybernetic arm open, ready to shoot you in the face. Uh, she's got a nice sassy walk as well. Um, serious detail. These people mean business. Um, very, very messy, bloody battles will ensue. I love that. I love it. It's so good. It's Dorothy. Uh, Kaguya. I think this is Kaguya here, who means business. She's got her sword ready for action. Uh, it's quite long as well, very much a samurai uh, sort of vibe going on. And she's ready for business. She's <laughs> She means business, that's, that's what it's all about. A nice pose on that one as well. The mini sculpts are all fantastic. Uh, then we've got here uh, Snow White, who's all flowing capes. Again, as I, as I think the most traditional uh, of all the characters that I can see so far, um, she's got that poison apple. I don't know if you can see it there. I'm trying to get that in focus for you. There you go. Uh, yeah, she means all manner of crazy. She's got a nasty look on her face as well, like she's going to cause some serious damage. And if you look around the back, the robe details are just the business. I love that. Uh, and then we have what looks like a Red Riding Hood, and she is packing a Gatling gun, because why not? Um, that is... <laughs> Some epic hardware for Red Riding Hood. And I think she's also got what looks like jet boots on or something. Uh, yeah, they're jet boots. That makes her fly up nice and high in the sky. Uh, her cybernetics, her hood is ready for action and she is ready to unleash hell. I think that part alone makes me want to play as uh, Red Riding Hood. The fact that she's got a Gatling gun and rocket boots is really, really cool. I love that. Uh, then we've got Match Girl who is, of course, riding a, a demon's head, because why not? And she's got a cheeky smile, like, I'm going to mess you up. Uh, and she's holding her matchstick, and she is ready to cause some trouble. Uh, she looks all cute and innocent, but I kid you not, she is all about the pain. Uh, the sculpt on the head is really great. Uh, and then, of course, her cheeky little green is in there as well, which is brilliant. Uh, then we've got what looks like a bit of Mulan. And she's got her blades and all sorts of other bells and whistles. She's got some sort of, what is that? Is that like a pneum pneumatic blade? That energy blade weapon we were talking about before? The knee guards and things there as well. My gosh, the detail they've put into these minis is awesome. They're so good. They're so, so good. I do like that they're a dark resin as well, um, just to give it a bit more heft, I guess, a bit more um, weight. Uh, and then we've got Showtime Alice here with her friend, the Cheshire Cat, her robotic friend, the Cheshire Cat. It's all about the show. The show must go on. And by the show, we mean bringing the pain. I do like the tail and the Cheshire Cat swinging out as well. He's got some serious armor. Alice has got those uh, crazy boots on down here. Uh, just to give you a bit more of an idea of the show, she's ready to kick some ass. A bit like Bravo from Flesh and Blood, if you've ever played the card game. Uh, and then here we've got uh, Shezerati. She's ready to tell her Thousand and One uh, Arabian Night Tales. And she's got what looks like her dream machine there. The flowing robes are awesome. That's cool. I need to figure out a way to bring this into some sort of D&D &D campaign um, just because I want to use them in my everyday gaming as well as just for this one. That's so good. The flowing hair as well is awesome. It's all a uh, separate piece. It's not all... I don't know. It, it's... Sculpted beautifully, beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Again, making it really tricky to decide, but I think this is one of my favorites. Uh, this is Sleeping Beauty, and she is going to scare the crap out of anybody that comes across her. Look at that. I mean, I haven't even turned it around, but she's just on fire. Uh, the sleeper has woken, and all hell has broken loose. It's reminiscent of... Um, 
The Dark, The Darkness from House on Haunted Hill, um, the remake, not the original, uh, with Jeffrey Rush. And it's just, I mean, look at it. It's just incredible. The flowing of the scope, the arms reaching out, the the shackles of the uh, straight jacket, the knife she's holding in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see the knife there and the hair. And it's just, it just looks incredible. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, that, this time, that is truly everything that's in the box this time, folks. I will come out. I'll give you some final thoughts. And we'll talk about what characters we're going to play first for this great new game. And I know I say it all the time, but there it is. That is the contents of the deluxe collection of the Kickstarter of Twisted Fables. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. I am itching to get inside there and play with all the different characters and play with my toys because that's what I love to do. Uh, again, I don't know which character I would like to play as first. Um, Red Riding Hood speaks to me because it was the character I first saw demoed for this game. Uh, although Sleeping Beauty's mini sculpt looks absolutely sick. Little Mermaid looks good too. The fact they all play differently, they have different um, attributes, different hit points, I think that's fantastic as well, which means this is gonna hit the table a lot and have a lot of replayability. If you have a preference on which characters you would like to see go head to head, by all means, pop them in the comments below. If you don't wanna pop them in the comments below, you can always hit us up at orders at hbgaming.com.au. Let us know there privately and we'll be able to put something together for you as well. Uh, thank you, as always, to our Patreon Gamer Army. We appreciate your constant and continued support. Uh, you can join the Gamer Army and earn some exclusive rewards. Check out our epic loot crate, loot crate tiers and get a game a month. Because it, why not? Why wouldn't you want to get a game a month? Uh, at the address that is on your screen, patreon.com forward slash hpgamingau. And lastly, of course, if you would like to, you can always jump on board the store site, hbgaming.com.au, to get your game on and get some great games at some great prices as well. Uh, Twisted Fables, we are looking, I'm obviously trying to get as many playthroughs done as I can, but it has been tricky in lockdown with the cherubs running around. That's why there's been a lot of junior gaming going on as well. But we are, of course, getting back into Catan season. Catan Blitz is coming soon. And you'll be able to check that out in November. If you haven't already, hit up the Catan Blitz page on our website to register. And you can win yourself some epic Catan loot as well. That's it from us from now, folks. Until then, if you have any comments, pop them in the comments below. If you'd like to make any suggestions or requests on what you'd like to see, by all means, reach out to us. Until then, folks, get back to the table, play more games, and we'll see you very, very soon. Bye for now.